go to find the tasks to complete for today. This is unit two, lesson two. So you're looking for tasks for U2L2. It's on the um, underneath assignments, or you can find it on the campus homepage for human anatomy and physiology in the weekly calendar. Just look for today's date, it's October the 5th. Uh, first of all, as usual, I just wanna quickly review the homework. Uh, I wanna clarify for the Ed puzzles, those are gonna be completion grades. So don't freak out if you got like every question wrong on the Ed puzzle, I'm not gonna give you like a zero. Um, the point is that you did the Ed puzzle because um, part of that is kind of watching and learning. So um, pretty cool uh, 3D simulation. What do you guys think of the, the computer model of the human body? I actually got to use that program or something similar to it in my master's program, but it's really cool. You, you can zoom in and out and you can like, it has a million settings, but you can basically like cut away layers and um, it, you end up with some pretty weird looking stuff sometimes, but it's kind of interesting to see how it all pieces together and, and functions. So. Um, any questions on those Ed puzzles or anything you had a hard time with? How about the chapter nine reading? We feel good on the chapter nine reading reflection. All right, lung anatomy. Uh, we're gonna be exploring that a little bit uh, today, but we're also gonna continue with our theme of high altitude um, and looking at some of the specific ailments uh, that's going on at high altitude because this is where the, those become really relevant now that we're talking about the lungs. Um, before we get into that, though, a couple little housekeeping things I want to do. Um, let's see how we're feeling about the respiratory system. We're going to play a quick quizzes, which is uh, essentially a, a knockoff version of Kahoot. I'm going to share my screen here. And let's see what you took from the reading and from the um, it puzzles. Uh, so uh, you're going to go to joinmyquiz.com. You should be able to see it on the screen I shared with you. Joinmyquiz.com, and you're going to enter the code 285893. Please use your name or something close to it so we know who everybody is. We've got 10 people, so I'll wait till we're at 10 or close to it. The Garrett's in the room, you're gonna have to figure something out. G could be. That's me. <laughs> okay. So maybe if uh, Gary Fernandez, you could just be F then. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, just 10 questions. Here we go. When you breathe, your lungs take in what and remove what? All right, Jillian in the lead, Julia close behind. The correct answer was indeed we breathe in oxygen and we uh, excrete carbon dioxide, key metabolic waste. The air sacs that are covered with capillaries where gas exchange takes place. All right, Julia, taking the lead. Yes, the air sacs where gas exchange takes place are called alveoli, not ravioli. Flap of tissue that covers the opening in the windpipe during swallowing. All right, Julia and Julian still in the lead. All right, a little divided here. Uh, it is called the epiglottis. I know this is confusing. The epiglottis is essentially guiding uh, air into the trachea. The epiglottis is located inside the pharynx. So it's a lot of overlapping terminology, but the epiglottis is the actual flap. Um, if you eat something that's a little too large, it, usually this is when it gets stuck in your throat. It's blocking the epiglottis, which is why when everyone does a Heimlich, if you've ever seen footage of that, um, 
the whatever is stuck often comes shooting out of the mouth because the epiglottis sort of catapults it out of the way. What is the main function of the respiratory system? All right, Jillian pulling ahead. Very good, you all got that it is to provide oxygen and remove carbon dioxide. Kind of a repeat question from that first one. Chamber behind the nose and mouth that leads to the trachea. This is kind of a large overall structure. All right, someone's got to catch up with Julian and Julia. They're killing it. Very good. It is indeed the pharynx. That's kind of the overall structure where you got your voice cords and everything else. Cavity within a bone or other tissue, especially one of the bones in the face and skull. that those are your sinuses. Um, no good when you get a sinus infection. The only externally visible part of the respiratory system. All right, Jillian back in the lead. Very good, again, you all got that it is just the nose that's the only external part we see. Which lung has two lobes? Julia back in second. Very good, it is the left lung and it has to do with kind of the anatomy of the, the way the diaphragm is shaped and the way the other organs are, there's limited space for both the lungs. But yeah, there's three on the right and two on the left. Olfactory receptors are located in the mucosa of the nose. What are the receptors used for? still in the lead very good you all got that it is for smell olfactory refers to smell okay last question which part of the respiratory system plays a major role in speech Jillian held on to the lead. Garrett coming from behind. Uh, very good, yes, the correct answer is the larynx. Those are where your vocal cords are. It's a little weird to think of food passing through your vocal cords, but uh, it is on that pathway. All right, I know they showed the leaderboard, but uh, way to go, Julian, Julia, and Garrett Fernandez. Nicely done. And we got the collection. Boy, most of you did pretty good. Um, all right, let's close that down. All right, way to go. Questions or comments on that little quiz game? Looks like we're feeling good about the lungs. So 
let's start talking a little bit today about what happens when the lungs things go wrong. Uh, however, before we get to that, let's take a look at the test, which I just graded. Um, I spent the weekend catching up on grading and um, both on assignments, and I also got to your assessment finally. I'm sorry I did not have that done on Thursday. Uh, just to walk you through st statistics, um, I really like Canvas because it really breaks things down in terms of how everybody did on the different questions. The multiple choice overall were fantastic. Um, most people were getting it the right answer uh, most of the time. These were all the first ones here. Where things got tricky is when we hit these fill in the blank ones where we were kind of breaking down the order of the circulatory system. I think there was a little bit of confusion around the valves in particular, right? The aortic valve versus bicuspid valve you can see here. Was a little more divided but then after that people were pretty confident about um, the vessels and the chambers and things like that moving into the second part similar pattern chambers and tubes you're all feeling good about and i actually haven't looked through this last one yet but yeah it looks like really yeah okay a little bit of confusion again about the valve valve locations um, but again as long as you have a drawing to refer to and you're kind of guiding yourself through it it, it you can kind of figure out what's going on um, so cardiac output, this was a, uh, oh yeah, this was the mathematical problem. Um, I think I might have uh, manually fixed the one that was, was typed in weirdly. Great sketches that I saw based on um, homeostasis. All of you, every single one of you, <laughs> uh, chose body temperature, which I guess isn't surprising because it's pretty simple and straightforward. The idea of sweating, shivering, going back to it. Um, I want to highlight Garrett Fernandez in particular, who I think made probably the most detailed diagram that I saw. Um, but really good job thinking about homeostasis and kind of the, the feedback loops um, and good reflection on that. Uh, then you had to graph the data. I apologize for giving you so much data to graph. I think this was, uh, I should have cut this table down by to at least half of the data. Um, but everyone kind of got along the right uh, means. You had great photos that you um, submitted and good reflections on uh, this data. So again, based on climatization. Oh, um, yeah, come on, there's this one question though. Blood oxygen content. Yeah, these all look really good. I think I'm, I'm, there's a question that I had in another class that, uh, that they had a hard time on. But uh, any questions or comments on this quiz overall? I will endeavor to make the next one shorter so that you can complete it within the allotted time in class. I apologize for going over on that. Um, so I encourage you to go check out the grades tab on Canvas. Just click on grades. It'll give you a complete breakdown of all your assignments uh, and as well as the, the test. Again, I'm not worried about anyone in particular. It all did really well. If you want to see me individually about the test or have a question about how certain questions was graded, I'm happy to stay after class today as well and, and talk through that with you. Okay, last little screen share I'll do is uh, looking at the feedback. You all filled out the end of September feedback survey and to show you a little breakdown here. Um, looks like engagement wise, I'm glad we're kind of in the upper range and I will do my best to keep us there. Uh, in terms of homework, uh, it has been inconsistent and so I will try to strike more of a pattern, um, make sure I'm not overwhelming you and then underwhelming you constantly. Um, seems like otherwise just enough but also some too much notes there. So again, I'm going to try to see if I can cut the readings down and try not to put too many specific tasks. Time has ranged from 30 minutes up to a couple hours. Um, so I think that's to be expected, but again, I want to try to be a little more consistent with that. Feeling good about the pacing, um, but again, that same inconsistency I'm going to try to um, deal with as best I can, try to come up with some routines for that. Looks like you're interested in getting away from your computer some of the time, so we'll explore more of those activities. We've done a few. Uh, and just good feedback overall. I summarized these on the um, task to complete list, but it seemed like the main thing was just reduced and more consistent homework using a puzzle, Kahoot, fun quiz games, kind of like what we just did, and using breakout rooms where possible, which we will use today. Questions or comments on that? Okay, uh, so there's a reading that we would like you to tackle, but it's a little dense. Um, this is something from a book that Mr. Olson actually has all about climbing and elevation and what's going on with the body at high elevations. And so I want to do a little jigsaw today or essentially I'm gonna assign the whole class into either an even or odd category. I've already kind of numbered you out. So I'm gonna throw you into just one of two breakout rooms. Um, and I need to figure out how I'm gonna identify those. So those of you who are in group one, uh, uh, that's a little counterintuitive, but I guess anyway, those of you who are in group one, you're gonna be the evens. Those of you in group two are gonna be the odds. 
um, I'll try to I'll reinforce that um, as we. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's how I broke it down. Yeah. Can I actually name the breakout rooms? That would be too good. It doesn't look like I can. So, uh, oh, I can. There you go. That will make things straightforward. Um, so, those of you in the evens group, your instructions are to read the um, three pages on acute mountain sickness called AMS. Uh, and there's a little acute mountain sickness reading quiz that you can work together to complete. Uh, it's just four questions kind of about what's going on with acute mountain sickness. Those of you in the odds group, you're going to read about high altitude pulmonary edema. It's called HAPE. Uh, and again, there's a very similar HAPE reading quiz, um, just four questions. Once you have that completed, we're going to come back together and then I'm going to pair all of you up, one even with one odd. And you're going to take the other quiz. So um, evens, you're going to take the HAPE quiz and odds are going to take the AMS quiz and your partner is going to help kind of teach you and walk you through it. And uh, please don't just copy and paste answers uh, across or through the chat or something. Uh, actually talk these things out. The, the text is a little dense, so just break it down as much as you can. Try to summarize and simplify. Feel free to get on Google and look things up if you want to. Um, but I'm going to time for 15 minutes for the first task, and I'll come uh, check in in each of the rooms periodically. Feeling clear on what to do? OK, breakout rooms are open.
Hello. Hello. Making sense on what to do? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I just read through it and try it. Uh, once everyone's kind of made through part of it, just try tackling the questions together. So. Okay. I'm in the room if you got questions. All right, we feeling good? We're all going to be good teachers? Yeah? <laughs> uh, you'll see that the other, um, the other groups had the exact same questions. They had a slightly longer reading, though, so I think they took a little while to get through it. All right, we are all back. Okay, are we all ready to be good teachers? Let's make sure we don't copy and paste answers over in the chat. Um, feel free to just work through things together. How many of you, after reading this, are like super excited to go mountain climbing. No, nah, not really. Doesn't make it sound very appealing, does it? <laughs> uh, again, you can avoid a lot of these conditions if you are well prepared. Uh, and they have rescued quite a few people who have still gone through these. So, um, all right. What I'm going to do now is quickly manually create rooms where I'm going to pair up odd and even. And uh, again, your goal is to teach your partner through, and I don't care which order you go in, uh, so someone can elect to go first, but then teach your partner through uh, the different questions. You'll see that they are the exact same questions. It's just, hey, instead of AMS, and in reality, one is sort of a version of the other, so. Uh, okay, let me just put these rooms together. All righty. Uh, this time I'll uh, time for about 10 minutes. I'll come check in. Go for it. Feel like you learned a little something from your classmates? I know the reading was pretty dense, uh, but I tried to keep the questions kind of general so you could list basic stuff. But um, I know it's a little weird and we're gonna explore this later, but once they get to high altitude, your body starts to leak fluids internally. That's sort of like the driving cause of all of this stuff. Um, the, one of the big signs is what they call edema. So when you have um, acute, uh, the altitude, the sickness, kind of the red puffy skin and things like that are all pretty good indicators. The reading does make it clear that there's certain things that are happening hormonally, which are sort of natural. It's not necessarily an indication of having problems yet, but the minute that you start to get these sort of feelings um, for both problems, what do they often associate the symptoms with, right? That it feels almost like you're what? Like you've consumed a lot of what? Alcohol. Yeah, you feel drunk almost, right? That you kind of lose your reasoning, um, coordination, stumbling around. Some people also just, they behave totally irrationally. One of the common things that people start doing is they start taking off clothes and stuff and it's a bit, or walking into dangerous places and it's, a big, you know, it's the last thing you wanna have happen when you're trying to climb a mountain. Um, AMS though, in particular, is reversible, like pretty easily. It's like if you, you can acclimatize, you can go down to elevation, there's no permanent damage. When you start getting into HAPE, that's when you're going to be damaging your lungs because you're literally filling them up with fluid. You're damaging the alveoli. That's a little more serious. Um, I'll have a little Ed puzzle um, with me explaining a little bit more of some slides that Mr. Olson uh, provided to me um, as homework. I unfortunately don't have that ready yet. I'm, I'm working through the slides and familiarizing myself with them, but I will have that ready by the end of today. Uh, for your homework. The other thing is, since we're exploring the respiratory system, I meant to do this so that you can work on this over the weekend, but it slipped my mind. Um, I want to do two activities. We're going to be measuring lung capacity, which everyone in Science 2, you might remember. Uh, what very expensive piece of equipment do we use for measuring lung capacity? A balloon. Yes, but that means you won't need to get balloons. Uh, so I would like to try to do this on Wednesday. Um, do you think you'd be able to hit a store like a Rite Aid or something by Wednesday to get balloons? Uh, you're all in the local area, so you might be competing with each other. Uh, Rite Aid, Target, all those standard stores are good places to look. Uh, we just need rubber balloons. Um, but you're going to need more than one because I'm also hoping to do a little modeling activity. You won't be making something quite like this. Uh, but very similar to it, where we're going to basically create the chest cavity and we're going to look and explore how the diaphragm works 
uh, and you can actually s then simulate gunshot wounds uh, once you have something like this built. Uh, for that, you're gonna need like a plastic bottle, more balloons, that's pretty much it. It helps sometimes to have rubber bands just to hold things together, um, but it's pretty simple. So all of that is on the bottom of the task to complete list. So let's, if you could, please try to get that equipment. So you just literally need a plastic bottle of some kind and balloons, those are the key things. Um, you need a ruler with centimeters on it too. I'll send out a survey or something like that to make sure we're feeling good. If, if we're missing, if like we can't get things, then, then we'll push it back to Friday or, or try to be flexible in some way. Um, so the only homework is a, a little sort of review ed puzzle and just getting that equipment. Um, I did make a drawing assignment, but I'm gonna take that away. I wanna save that for a little bit later. So questions or comments? All right, that's it for me kids. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye, thank All you. Right, thank you.